Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning. <laughs> Got underway about eight o'clock this morning, didn't we? And uh, we're just motoring out the anchorage up to the top of this little island where there's a channel goes through. You see a sailboat up there. We'll set sail and get up to the channel and uh, sail across the top of this Omu across to Langerland is our goal today uh, and then down behind Langerland. Well, good morning all. Got the morning coffee on the go. Let's have a slurp. Last week, as you no doubt will remember, I showed the sails and the way I've rigged them and, and you know the the rigging of the sails is still in development and it's part of the testing and I'm trying to sort out certainly sheet lengths and, and whether I need more lines or not and yeah you know, some little adjustments still going on. But after that we sailed up to an anchorage off of the Danish island of Ulmu. Ulmu <laughs> which I might not be pronouncing, almost certainly am not pronouncing correctly. Um, but then, yeah, I was there. And then we stayed there for a couple of days. It was a little bit breezy and we were waiting for a good wind direction because it was a westerly. And we were waiting for a good wind direction to cross the Great Belt. Now, the Great Belt is the biggest of the gaps between what I should call mainland Denmark, that's the bit that's joined to mainland Europe, Jutland. Then the next island over is Finn or Funen. And then you've got the Great Belt. So between Jutland and Funen or Finn is, is the small belt. And then from Finn across to Zealand, the island with Copenhagen on, is the Great Belt. And it's the biggest of the gaps. And then you've got another small gap, the Urizunt, across to Sweden relatively small yeah. <laughs> when you drive across that horizon bridge it's pretty impressive but it, but it, when you look at the chart the great belt is the biggest of the gaps and it's significantly so and that feeds up into Kattegat and then you know round into the opening of the Baltic so it's a significant uh, crossing there's a lot of shipping coming through there because it's the main shipping route into the Baltic um, from that area uh, not including the Kiel Canal, of course. But yeah, very busy. And it also has potential for some for some waves to build up there because you've got the massive fetch all the way down from Cadigat straight down through there. So um, yeah, we crossed that. We were good with the weather. We had northerly about 15 knots and we sailed across that with full sail. And that's what you're about to see. And then well, one last thing to say is that we then wanted to round a big island called Langerland and go down behind it. But the, off the tip of Langerland is an awful lot of shallow water that extends a long way up, long way up. So we had to go quite a long way north to clear all them shallows, and get round and run down behind. Let's have a look. Quite a significant shipping channel through here. Through the big bridge, and you see a big old ship going down there. We're sailing under full sail now. Doing quite nicely. Uh, and as you'll see, you see the wind is slightly forwards of the beam. It's a big way, or big waves, but you know, some waves about there. Probably churned up on a shipping, I expect. Um, we're doing quite well. What's on the menu for breakfast then? Porridge. Porridge. Lovely. Ah, we're getting on very well. Crossing the, the belt. And uh, no shipping now to worry us. We had a couple of big ships to buy that we had to. Well, we didn't have to avoid, but they were close. Uh, not dangerously close, of course. Porridge steering, porridge leg steering isn't quite as accurate as the hand steering, as to be said. Oh, <laughs> uh, so we've turned and now we're running down the channel between Langerland and uh, 
That must be Jutland over there, I think, isn't it? Langerland? No, Langerland of Finn, isn't it? Yes, Langerland of Finn. <laughs> I remember where we are. Yeah, and uh, it's very, very peaceful. You can see it's dead downwind, so it's all very gentle. And uh, have a look. The main so I was doing most of the work, it's sort of blocking the foresail at the minute, but um, we're getting along fine, so it's all good really. This was on the helm. There's the wind speed indicator, showing that much. The main is looking nice. The creases, the new creases are starting to come out of it. It's starting to loosen up the cloth. Still a bit more to do, but uh, it's good. Very good. Isn't that lovely? Just a bird haven there, look. And over here. Boat Haven. And it's all very, very lovely. It's visible on the hill. Well, clearly, we're in a bit of a transitional phase with this channel. For, for some nearly six years, we were a building channel, um, and now we're out sailing, testing. But this winter, we'll certainly be back to, to some boat projects. I've got a growing list of things. Let me grab the camera and show you. Here's my winter project list. Um, and we'll see how many of these we get done. Uh, some more anti-slip on the deck. Uh, a bit of USB, uh, a USB plug and some storage in the quarter berth. Um, swim ladder, most important. Finish the wind vane, most important. A little shelf in the heads in the bathroom there for the toothbrush and whatever. A grating in the cockpit would be nice. An external switch under the steps here for switching the inverter on or off. Less important, but would be nice. A fuel gauge, I've ordered it, it's on its way. Some proper swage lines for the railings. To redo and finish the mast wedges and boots, at the moment they're still temporary. They're working fine, it's good and solid, but a, a thorough job on the mast wedges and boots. The rear crankshaft seal, I'm not sure about. It was leaking, it might have stopped. I live in hope. Um, the tow, tow rail needs some varnish and a few other bits actually. <laughs> Something to hang my guitar up with. And to make some sail colours. So there we go, that's the list so far. More will be added, no doubt. I dare say there's a few things I already know that I haven't put on the list. But yeah, so the winter will be some, some boat work. And then hopefully we'll be ready to head off for some proper cruising next spring and actually get out and about with this boat. It'll be the end of the testing phase. Exciting times. There's one thing you can do to support the channel, support the project, that won't cost you a penny, and that is to hit that old subscribe button, please. Um, you know, it's just so, uh, it would help us with that dreaded YouTube algorithm. And uh, so it doesn't really cost you anything at all. Thanks. Well, we stayed there in Turo for a couple of days, pumped up the dinghy and went ashore, found a delightful little microbrewery. But then it was time to head on uh, down to Aero's Curbing on the island of Aero, which meant going up through this little channel around by the city of Svendborg. There are a lot of boats about. It's a very busy bit of water. There are all sorts of boats out there, but also quite a strong flow in the channel. Look at the flow on that. We've got good three knots against us. Amazing, in the Baltic. And that sort of current you don't really expect in the Baltic. Uh, it's, it's known for its lack of tides really. But once we got under the bridge, 
we were able to switch off the engine and sail. Why the water flow through here against us. It's Elizabeth's birthday today and uh, she wanted to go for a sail today so I uh, woke up to a very foggy morning but uh, have a look at this there's the birthday girl there's the blue sky there's us doing four and a half knots on uh, just the foresail downwind and it's all very beautiful So, we're on a mission ashore. Yes. We're emptying bins out, aren't we, today? So this is the, the Danish harbour town of Eriskirving and it's lovely, absolutely lovely. I'll show you a few sights. Lovely little picnic bench in a little park by the pond. And Elizabeth's about to unpack the lunch from the shopping bucket. Lunch. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, that was good. Cherry tomato, eh? <laughs> Chips and dips. Let's go. One that's labelled extra hot, I hope it is. No. 
No. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a surprise. Here's mm. tomato sauce arrabbiata. Oh, it's got a hint in it. <laughs> So it's about six in the evening and we're going to row across this little island that we're just anchored off of. A little desert island that's uh, obviously a home to birds. And uh, sit down and have a beer. Okay, so you're not allowed to come here between March the 1st and July the 15th because of bird breeding. That's lovely, I uh, proof. It's after July the 15th, so we're allowed. And look at this. It's a desert island. Pretty the old Dansk Earl. Odin's a classic. It's a nice dark beer, isn't it? Yeah. I like it. I like it. So, <laughs> Dad has made the terrible mistake of drinking his beer far too quickly and deciding that he needs to get some more. <laughs> Let me show you. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that actually. Probably cannot. Dad has just got to the boat just because he wanted some more beer. Which, like, I wouldn't mind more beer. But he drank his quicker, so now he has to row. You never underestimate the amount of beer you need. <laughs> Good. That's all the beer we have, actually. And there we go. That's it for this week. We've spent a couple of weeks now in this delightful town of Eris Curving. It really is a treat. I love it here. Um, and I can thoroughly recommend it. But it's time to move on. We will be moving on uh, in a couple of days. So next week's video will be some more sailing. I've got a couple of boat systems to show you that I haven't shown you yet. Um, we had a question last week about um, asking us to show you a bit of detail of what it's like to live aboard. I should try to do that. So, yeah, some exciting stuff coming up, I hope. <laughs> thank you for watching. As ever, massive thank you to the lovely people who support us on Patreon and via PayPal. Links to both of those in the video description. See you next time. Bye.